Hello friends, welcome to Finance MCQ. I am CA Pritam Sangwan and today we will continue our discussion regarding ratio analysis which is an important topic from commerce and accountancy subject of paper 2 which is a technical syllabus of your SEBI exam. Friends, this technical syllabus is of 100 marks in phase 1 and it has two-third weightage in phase 2 of your SEBI grade A exam. And friends, you can find entire technical syllabus of SEBI grade A exam chapter wise, topic wise on finance MCQ website in MCQ question format. You can visit the website and practice entire technical syllabus there. I have put the website link in the description box below. So let's begin. Friends, we have already discussed that there are various types of financial ratios such as liquidity ratios, leverage ratios, activity ratios and profitability ratio. Friends, we have already covered liquidity ratio and leverage ratio in our previous videos and in this video we will cover activity ratio. So let's start. Friends, activity ratio it is also known as efficiency ratio or performance ratio or turnover ratio. So do keep this in mind. And friends, these ratios evaluate the efficiency with which the firm manages and utilizes its assets. And these ratios are also called as asset management ratios. So apart from these three names that is efficiency, performance and turnover ratios, these ratios are also known as asset management ratios. And friends, these ratios are calculated with reference to sales or cost of goods sold and expressed in terms of rate or in times. So I hope the meaning of activity ratio is covered. So now let's move on to the next point. Now friends, let's discuss about various types of activity ratios. So friends, the first one is total asset turnover ratio. Then we have fixed asset turnover ratio. Then we will have capital turnover ratio. Then current asset turnover ratio. And last working capital turnover ratio. So let's discuss them one by one. So first one is total asset turnover ratio. So friends, this ratio measures the efficiency with which a firm uses its total assets. That is, this ratio will measure that how effectively the firm utilizes its total assets and formula to calculate this ratio is sales upon total assets or cost of goods sold upon total assets. So whichever is given in the questions, we have to consider that. So I hope this total turnover ratio is clear. So friends, wherever there is a turnover involved in the ratio, so you have to understand that it is related to sales or cost of goods sold. So let's move on to the next point. Now friends, let's talk about fixed asset turnover ratio. So friends, this ratio measures the efficiency with which a firm uses its fixed assets in total turnover. In total asset turnover ratio, we talked about total assets. Here, it's talk about fixed assets only. And friends, higher fixed asset turnover ratio indicates efficient utilization of fixed assets in generating sales. So basically, this ratio will tell us how much sales is generated from one rupee of fixed asset. And formula to calculate this ratio is sales upon fixed assets or cost of goods sold upon fixed assets, whichever given in the questions, we have to use that as a medium to calculate this ratio. So I hope this fixed asset turnover ratio is also clear to all of you. Now let's move on to the next ratio. So now friend, let's talk about capital asset turnover ratio. So friends, this ratio is also known as net asset turnover ratio. And friends, this ratio indicates firm's ability to generate sales or cost of goods sold per rupee of long term investments that is from one rupee of long term investments how much sales is generated by the firm this ratio helps to understand that and friends higher ratio indicates more effective utilization of owners and borrowed fund so do keep this in mind and friends formula to calculate capital asset turnover ratio is 
sales or cost of goods sold upon net assets and how net assets is calculated as it is calculated as net fixed assets plus net current assets and your current assets is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities and friends net asset is equal to capital employed hence this ratio is known as capital turnover ratio so i hope this capital asset turnover ratio is also clear to all of you now let's move on to next ratio friends now let's talk about current asset turnover ratio so friends this ratio measures the efficiency with which a firm uses its current assets so friends here every ratio signifies certain assets like earlier total assets then net assets now the current assets so this ratio measures efficiency with which a firm uses its current assets and friends this ratio is calculated as sales or cost of goods sold upon current assets so do keep this in mind and i hope this ratio is clear now let's move on to next ratio now friends let's talk about working capital turnover ratio so friends this ratio is calculated as sales or cost of goods sold upon working capital and friends this ratio is further bifurcated into inventory turnover ratio debtors turnover ratio and creditors turnover ratio so now we will study each ratio in detail the first one is inventory turnover ratio so friends inventory turnover ratio it is also known as stock turnover ratio why because inventory and stock can be used simultaneously or against each other and friends this ratio establish relationship between cost of goods sold and average inventory held during the year and friends this ratio also measures efficiency with which firms utilize or manages its inventory and this ratio indicate how fast an inventory is sold in the market by the company so this is inventory turnover ratio and how it is calculated so it is calculated as cost of goods sold or sales upon average inventory and how average inventory is calculated as it is calculated as opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 so by doing this we will get average inventory which will help us to calculate inventory turnover ratio so i hope this inventory turnover ratio is also clear now let's move on to debtors turnover ratio so friends debtors turnover ratio measures efficiency with which firm is managing its account receivables that is their your trade receivables or debtors and friends it throws the light on the collection and credit policy of the firm friends this ratio is calculated as credit sales upon average debtors here we have to use only credit sales why because on credit sales only we will have debtors and not on cash sales so this ratio is calculated as credit sales upon average debtors and friends there is also another concept called debtors velocity or average collection period so friends it indicates average collection period that is what is the timing or what is the time period during which we will collect our debtors or receive money from debtors and friends it measures number of days it takes to collect an account receivable that is your debtors and friends debtors velocity is calculated as average account receivables or your debtors upon average daily credit sales and how do you calculate average daily credit sales that is very simple that you have to do credit sales upon 360 days in a year we will assume 360 days or 365 days you can assume whatever you want so by doing that we will get average daily credit sales so i hope this debtors turnover ratio and debtors velocity is clear to all of you now let's move on to our next ratio now friends let's talk about creditors turnover ratio it is similar to that of debtors turnover ratio friends this ratio calculated on the same line as of debtors turnover ratio and low ratio indicates liberal credit policy and high ratio indicates payable are settled rapidly so from a firm's point of view liberal 
credit policy will be required because if there is if our payables are settled very rapidly that it means we require frequent cash to pay off our creditors and friends this ratio is calculated as annual net credit purchase upon average creditors so in case of a debtors turnover ratio we have credit sales here we will have credit purchase and friends like debtors velocity we will here have payment velocity or average payment period and it indicates average payment period and it measures number of days it take to settle an account receivable its accounts payable not receivable just rectify that point and friends the formula to calculate it average accounts payable or creditors upon average daily purchases so i hope this creditors turnover ratio is clear to all of you now let's move on to the next point friends now let's just quickly recap of activity ratios that we have discussed so far first one was total assets turnover ratio then we have fixed assets turnover ratio then we talk about capital turnover ratio then we talk about current assets turnover ratio and last we talk about working capital turnover ratio so friends try to remember the significance of this ratio and their relevance you won't be asked to calculate the ratios because they want you know what this ratio signifies and what are the uses of this ratio so just try to remember the significance and if possible do remember their formula because if they ask if they ask you in the exam so you'll able to answer them so friends with this we have covered this entire activity ratios and in the next video we will talk about other type of ratio which are relevant for your sabi grade a exam friends for more practice of this topic in mcq format i request you to please visit finance mcq website it has entire sabi grade a technical syllabus which is paper 2 of journal stream in mcq format it has 2000 plus subject wise topic wise mcq questions to practice we have added explanations for correct answers wherever required it also has 25 test series for your technical syllabus to practice so friends there is lot of study materials to practice on finance mcq do visit the website for more practice and increase your selection chances friends website link is in the description box below I will come up with new video till then take care and thank you so much for watching